But shout out to Shot Town. Listen, listen. I'm just as tired as you guys are about talking about Chicago. I promise. As much as I like getting on Brandon Johnson, I am absolutely tired of talking about Chicago. If there was another city that could replace Chicago, I absolutely would. But how can I? Answer me this question. How can I ignore just the last live stream that I did? I showed y'all all of the multiple shootings that was happening within 24 hours. How can I ignore the idea that 20 robberies happened over Sunday? You know, I was watching one of my favorite series again. The Wire, right? And on The Wire, they had what they called, I believe it was like a truce on Sundays, but basically there should be no warring on a Sunday. So much so to where arch enemies understood that you never go to war or hit somebody or hit somebody's grandma on a Sunday. Sunday was the Lord's Day. You know what I'm saying? Sunday was about, listen, when they got at his grandmother on the wire. Y'all got to watch the wire. They made them boys go and apologize because they shot up grandma hat. They shot up grandma hat. What up to my girl Q? Make sure y'all tuning into the Q show tonight. It's going to be a great show. Chicago on a Sunday overnight had over 20 robberies, shootings, robbed three food trucks all while they were preparing in order to build the next tent migrant shelter you don't believe me let me show you dozens of protesters most of them residents of brighton park came out once again today to speak up against the city's plans to erect a winterized base camp for migrants at this vacant lot at 38th street in california construction on which according to a letter saturday from 12th ward older woman julia ramirez will begin tomorrow hold on hold on i'm sorry let me back up for a minute what's the alderman's name let me back up one more second. On which, according to a letter Saturday from 12th Ward Alder woman Julia Ramirez. You're not going to skip past that. Who is Julia Ramirez? Who is Julia Ramirez? If somebody knows Alderman Julia Ramirez, somebody tell them to get in touch with me because I'm curious as to what's going on over here in Chicago and their specific district will begin tomorrow. This in spite of soil tests showing the land is contaminated with toxic metals. A while back, they tried to put a, a, a playground, they couldn't. They tried to put a school, they couldn't. People did background histories on this site. It was contaminated because it was a railroad track disposal. For nearly six weeks now, a small- So think about it, y'all. Think about it. And remember, the name of this show is called The Millionaire Morning Show. So as we evaluate this, as we evaluate this, understand this. Not only are they over budget, not only is Chicago running at a deficit, not only did they not property, properly allocate monies for the entire year for what it is that they're already planning to do. You got money going over to vendors. You got aldermen continuing to support Brandon Johnson. And they're putting up the tent on a contaminated site. They've already run soil tests. They can't even put a playground there. But not only are they bringing them in here, but they're bringing them in here and contaminating them in order to make sure that the tent, according to the news reports, are going up on a contaminated site. So this actually is a contradiction so what Brandon Johnson actually stands for when he had all of the pastors around him, right? A contaminated site is where they're putting the migrant shelter on top of. Let's continue. Small contingent of residents has been out nearly every day to express their displeasure at the proposed camp, which they believe would drain already limited resources from those who live here. 
You got veterans out there. You got homeless. Why don't you take care of our people before anybody else? News that the soil is polluted has only heightened residents' opposition. Some saying they don't trust that adequate remediation has been done. They should release the environmental report to the public. So I'm sorry, Jackie Chan. Let me just say this for a minute. Y'all know, <laughs> y'all know how when black people and we always used to complain, but it's kind of went away. Shout out to people of good quality. Y'all remember when black people and they used to find a person that had the most broken English in order to report on a report? Uh, yesterday on the news yesterday, we had 25 people shot over in Detroit. I'm sorry, sir. Can you please help us to understand exactly what happened over there? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, they would just run out the house. I want to hear from somebody that can communicate effectively. Don't you put somebody in the front of the camera <laughs> in front of me talking about what we not doing for migrants, sir. We need to check your status because if you don't know how to speak proper English, I'm just trying to figure out if you're trying to keep ISIS or whatever it is. What was the agency that they use in order to round up all of the immigrants that's not necessarily supposed to be here? Sir, I'm going to need to check your card, your green card. What's the agency? I know it ain't ISIS. That's the terrorist group. Uh, what's the agency that they have over here in America to be able to get get all of the immigrants that's not supposed to be here? Let me look it up. I need to understand who the immigrants are. <laughs> oh, agency for immigrants. What's the name of it, y'all? Homeland Security. It's like a, a, a ICE. It's called ICE. Shout out to y'all in the chat. It's called ICE. Okay, so it's not ISIS. It's ICE. We need ICE over here to come over and check uh, Jackie's. Check Jackie's green card because I'm not sure if this guy is even qualified to speak on this in the first place. All right? Done. They should release the environmental report to the public so we know how toxic this land is. I don't know how toxic the land is. I certainly don't know how toxic the land is, but I have no idea the words that are coming out of your mouth, man. You know, and they said they fixed it. It's by laying a thin layer of I read the chat. It's ice. You put I get it. Garden, okay? That's their fix. The winterized. Hold on, wait, wait. Let me let me get this. Public? Let me get him his the rest of it. Cause if anybody got a translator inside of the chat, let me know. I need to get the rest of this to understand what's going on. So we know how toxic this land is, you know. And they said they fixed it. It's by laying a thin layer of little stone that you put on your garden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, according to Jackie here, he said they fished it by putting a little, little stones over the garden, like your garden. That's how they fished it. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. I believe that we should have, in the United States of America, the... Um, I think you should have to do pass certain things in order to be able to work here, live here, and to be a citizen in the United States of America. I have no idea what he just said. I have no idea. Something about little stones like in your garden, contamination and soil. That's all I got. That's all I got. Seriously. That seriously. That's all I got out of this. Contamination, soil garden stones and tasse that's their fix the winterized base camps which would look something like these already erected in new york would temporarily house up to two thousand migrants many of whom have been living at airports and at police stations around the city in her letter to residents announcing the impending construction, Alderwoman Ramirez reiterated her opposition, saying in part, it is essential for residents of this community to be <laughs> whatever, aware Connie. of the environmental Whatever, impacts. Connie Harris. Whatever. 
and potential risks associated with this project. We have a right to know if the site is safe for both asylum seekers and community members at large. Well, so they weren't concerned about it when it was the regular people, but they're concerned about it now that they're building a tent over there and the migrants. Okay, cool. But that's not really what I want you to pay attention to what's happening in Chicago, right? While that's happening, so there's so many different things and so many different moving pieces, right, all at the same time. While that's happening, this is what was happening over the last 24 hours in Chicago. Oh, no. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. You're not going to finesse me on this one. I don't know what's happening. I don't know why they don't want to hold me down. Give me a second. We're going to find this. We're going to find this one. Mm -mm. Yeah, buddy. You're not going to get away with that one. Nope. 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 Chicago thought that they was going to get away. They thought they thought that we was just going to roll over and that was going to be the end of the conversation. Nope. Give me a second. Give me a second. I got you, boo. Shout out to Chicago. They said, you're not going to hold us accountable today. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. That's right. 20 robberies happening just yesterday. One of those includes a woman who was actually robbed uh, at gunpoint and shot while parking her car just yesterday morning. Take a look at the scene that we have here. This is from yesterday. It happened around 8 o'clock in the morning in the Garfield Park neighborhood. Police are saying a 49-year-old woman was parking near the corner of 5th Avenue and Sacramento Avenue when the suspects got out of a black SUV showing a gun and demanding the victim's belongings. Police are telling us the woman was shot in her upper abdomen during that robbery. She was taken to Mount Sinai Hospital in good condition. However, no one is in custody. WG encountered and found around 20 armed robberies happening just on Sunday, at least five of them happened yesterday evening in the South Lawndale and Brighton Park neighborhoods involving four suspects. Did, did y'all hear what we just said? Did y'all hear what we just said? People shot over 20, not two, not one, not three, not 10, 20 armed robberies over Sunday evening. As soon as it went dark outside, look, look, this is every, every single live stream. I get at least five different news reports from Chicagoans saying, Anton, this is what's happening in Chicago. Overnight, 14 people shot. Overnight, teens shot. Overnight, Sunday, over the weekend, Thanksgiving, 20 people robbed, shot. Woman walking into her house. Man walking down the alley with some pizza. Daylight, nighttime. Seriously, every single, every single day. Can you imagine people, 20 people getting shot? and robbed and houses broken in and we don't even know how many crimes wasn't even reported 20 20 armed not just 20 break-ins 20 armed robberies at least four different people and four different crews reported 20 in the united states of america of a major city one of the largest cities in the united states of america and we can't get a handle on crime. On top of that, you have the Safety Act that basically explains that the person or the people responsible is a possibility that they can get out without even having bail. That's crazy. That is absolutely, positively insane.
suspect she was in a white SUV. Police are saying one of their victims was a food truck parked near the corner of 31st and Kedzie. One of the workers of that truck told us it's the fourth time they've actually been robbed in the last two weeks. This time, the suspects may have gotten away with at least $700. As of right now, no one's in custody, but police sent out a community alerts warning people to be vigilant and stay alert when out and also walk in groups and don't carry large amounts of money on. Did you hear the, the, the warnings? Hey, 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 hey. Don't worry about it. Just don't walk in, walk in large groups together. Make sure you don't carry a lot of money. Be vigilant and keep your head on a swivel. This is the advice that they got for us. Not, we gonna put more police on the street. Hey, we caught them. Hey, nope. No catching, no nothing. Just be vigilant. And make sure that you walk with a community of people because they're less likely, to, less likely to rob you if you got a group of people with you. But it wasn't just one food truck that they robbed. They robbed three. Yeah, I'm told there were at least three food trucks in Brighton Park that were robbed this evening. The workers there are telling us that three suspects pulled up with some sort of large guns demanding their money. Police say this all happened just after 530 this evening. The first incident happening right near 39th and Kedzie. Police say the suspects flashed their guns and got away with the workers belongings. Another incident just down the road near 31st and Kedzie where there are three food trucks lined up along that street. One of the trucks was able to lock up their doors before the suspects got in, but a worker there. Look, uh, hold on. Look at look at the culprit in the background. How, what's the possibility that the guy in the red with the hood on that's just just so happen to walk by Maybe one of the people that's the culprits or the people that's a crime. You know, I've learned from these crime shows and even watching uh, Mindhunters on Netflix that often at times the people that commit the crimes revisit the scene of the crime within 24 hours of it happening to see what's going on. Look, look at the guy. Watch the guy walk past in the red. How, how safe do you guys feel? Before the suspects got in, but a worker there tells me that the truth trucks in front of her were robbed by the three suspects. She says this is the fourth time that's happened in two weeks. She explains what unfolded tonight. Three guys, uh, they came uh, walking through the street and one, one of the guys, he have a large gun and the others two, they have a pistol. And she don't even know how to fill out a police report because she can't even say a sentence without it being a run on sentence. I mean, you know, I'm not one to victim shame, but I'm just saying if I want to take a police report. We gonna have to stop putting a period instead of a comma after every single word that you say, ma'am. And he had pistol had a pistol. I'm not one to victim shame. I have no idea what's going on outside of these streets. I don't know what's going on, but I can't even take a police report from you, ma'am, because not only do we have migrants coming into this company that don't even know how to speak English properly, but we also have an inept police department that's been basically hobbled by our political system. And then on top of that, you got a bunch of teens running around robbing everybody over in Chicago. You got a... <laughs> this, this country is third world, fam. Think about this for a second. You got little kids robbing people. You have a police department that can't even solve for the crime because they don't have no support from the leaders in the community, although they are managing over $16 billion. And then you have the victims of the crime that can't even tell you what the police report is supposed to say so we can catch the victim because they don't even know how to speak proper English. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. I shouldn't even have named this $21,500. I should have just named this, this is America. I should change the cover photo to this right now and say this is America. Or Cuba. Or, or Haiti. Or the bad part of Mexico with the cartels in it. You see, you see this? The only people that are the real victims are the people that want to actually do the right thing and pay their taxes on time. And no, no, Lady Shan, you said you best move from that state. 
you can't go nowhere no more. It's now affecting everybody. As we go through this show today, what you're going to realize is that you can't run from crime anymore. If you don't want to handle it, you can't run from it because eventually it's just like a virus. It's like bacteria. It's going to come and it's going to find you. It's going to come over into your space. You got to stop it in its tracks. You have to nip it in the bud or you're going to open up Pandora's box. And now nobody wants to be accountable for the thing that they supported when they said to fund the police and turn every state blue and give everybody money and bigger government and let everybody in and open up the borders. You got all of these different factors that's working, but everybody want to say, oh, no, it's his fault. It's his fault. No, it's our fault. It's our fault. We'll get there. Yeah, it's going to be one of them type of shows today. So shout out to Chi-Town. Shout out to the Shy. 